everybody so welcome to another edition of knowledge graph technology showcase winter edition where i go through some of the cool tools and services that are out there so that you don't necessarily have to reach out to that salesperson unless you really want to all right and these are all my honest review these are not sponsored and if I missed something that you really want to see reviewed, make sure you link it down below. So today we are going to be talking about RDF Box, which is something that is, well, RDF based, but it's really got a little bit of a thing to say about what inferencing really does for your company. And I have to say, that's one of the strengths of RDF. So if you are interested to see how that can look at scale, especially if you are already embarking into RDF, make sure you keep on watching. So my name is Peter, Peter Crocker, and I'm the CEO here at Oxford Semantic Technologies. And the product that we make, as you've already referenced, is, is RDF Fox. Yeah, what is it? So it's a, well, it's, it's a couple of things. It's a, a high performance knowledge graph, but also a reasoning engine. So for those that are not familiar with uh, inferencing and reasoning and, and that sort of thing, what can you give us an example of what that looks like? Uh, yeah, for so those that are not familiar. Reasoning is about uh, representing abstractions of information, for example. Um, so, for example, today we're going to be talking a bit about uh, about racing drivers. Mm -hmm. Racing drivers are, are people. So if I was to give you a database that had racing drivers in them, uh, mechanics for, for the vehicles, uh, commentators, these are all classes of, of people. And one of the simplest things you can do with reasoning is to say within this database of drivers, of constructors, of mechanics, um, give me all the people and, and inferencing is the is the magic that, that that does that for you, right? Makes makes those yeah. connections and and allows you to ask questions at, at this higher a higher order of concept. All right, so Peter, you talked about a very interesting and fun sounding use case. Do you want to show us what that looks like? Yeah, absolutely. A, a bunch of us at, at Oxford Semantics, and we've got some some heritage here, um, quite into Formula One. And at the moment, um, there's there's quite a quite a interesting uh, season sort of coming to a t coming to a conclusion. We're asking the question, or we're allowing our users to ask the question. Now, how do you define the best Formula One driver of all time? And, and this translates into business, right? Who's who's the best salesperson? Um, what's the best next product to recommend to this user? So recommendation type use cases, you know, what's who, who are the best customers for us to approach with our marketing campaign? So here we have uh, an application that we've built for for this question. Um, and as you'll see, we're focusing really more on the question than, than necessarily mm -hmm. the, the answers, allowing you to to define the question. And um, you know, one of the there are many different ways. If, you, if you've ever followed Formula One, there are many different ways in which this question's asked. The most obvious one and the one we start with is is race points. So who has got the most race points? You can change the question, right? You can say instead of race points, I'm interested in positions gained. So here we flip the question. We're saying no longer it's who got the, the highest position within the most number of races and, and adding up those scores, but who has who has improved the most in, in the most number of races? The other thing we can look at is, is just coming back to this point of you know, what makes the best driver. Is it is it actually the driver or the car? We might want to vary that. And, and one way of varying that is to look at teammates. Yeah, we're, we're not going to look at the whole field for a race. We're only going to compare two teammates because those two teammates are racing in the same equipment. In the same vehicle so we've taken that that variable out of the equation when we're in terms of this calculation at the moment we've got a heavy bias towards those who have been in the most races so we might want to flip things around there and say actually why don't we why don't we take an average and and you can see you know we, we're constantly redefining the question the application we've got here is is calling an api and it's very simple every time i've clicked on on those buttons we we make a minor change to the um to the sparkle, the, the query language we use mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Um, imagine trying to do this in a relational setting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one of those changes would have would have required a conversation with your with your DBA, perhaps to say, mm -hmm. you know, I need you to now go and index that particular mm -hmm. table because so suddenly that's become important to me. Yep, exactly. I need you to go and add in this additional join because graph databases a natural place for you to form all of these new relationships. I, I do want to ask. So you have created this dashboard. Yep. It is very specific to this data set. So yes. where does RDF Fox fit in? Is it 
the graph database behind the scenes and it has an API on it that you can create these, or is this dashboard creation part of the tool? So no, this is a this is a custom uh, dashboard that we have created um, mm -hmm. for, for, for demo purposes, um, and we've you know, we've put some polish on it. Um, you could you could be using some of the off the off the shelf dashboard tools. So you know things things like that exist. And they have uh, they have interfaces to to call our our API. And what you see is just to give you a sense of the the size of the data here. This is the entire history of, of Formula One. Goes all the way back to to the beginning, back in the 1950s, I think. The the number to really focus in on is um, 25,000 driver results. So every time we click on one of these one of these options, we're performing a query against that against that database. And we're essentially going and touching each one of those 25,000 race results mm -hmm. because we need to calculate a score. And because we're looking for the best, we need to calculate a score for every single driver, mm -hmm. you know, within the, albeit within the constraints of, of the filters. Um, so we're doing all of that and we're taking an average. So a lot is, a lot is going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, and then we order the results and then we, in this case, put a limit on it to return the top, I think, uh, 20 to, to put in this visual at the top. All of that's happening with Idea Fox. All of that's happening in, in milliseconds. And this is one of the unique characteristics of Idea Fox is you know, one of our claims is to be uh, to be one of the fastest RDF uh, databases. Yeah, and, and I, that's a good point to, to make is that a lot of people ask me about performance. And they mm. ask me, what is the best graph database you know, label property graph, RDF, and uh, I, I can't give you an answer uh, because you just pointed out one, one thing, right? There's latency. Is it on-prem? Is it on a cloud? Which cloud uh, servers are you using? Because if you're using the ones in North America and you're in Russia, they're not going to be as fast, sure. <laughs> right? Sure. Um, you know, what kind of queries are you running? If you're running like crazy complicated queries, you know, that's why a lot of graph providers actually have people to work with you to um, update and refine your queries, because sometimes you're doing a query. It's not wrong. It's just not very effective. Mm. So all of these things go into what makes a fast graph database. So uh, when people ask me what that question about that question, there is a very good reason I don't have one answer. <laughs> right? yes. The same reason that Peter doesn't have one answer. Although I think Peter uh, d does have an opinion that RDF Fox is faster, <laughs> at least in RDF. <laughs> so um, is there any way you can actually show us a little bit of behind the scenes? Like yeah, if absolutely. I wanted to actually do something with the graph, how mm -hmm. would I do that? So firstly, here is sort of the the sequence of, of what happens when a when a query is issued. So um, over on that left hand side panel, we're, we're making changes there and a request goes over to to Idea Fox. Um, we're showing sort of uh, down the bottom here just an illustration of some of the complexity of that request. More on that later. And then the result comes over to um, uh, to the to the central dashboard that we see. But but let's let's then go to the the next piece. How where did where do all the data come from? Where where was it assembled from? So here here we're showing you um, all the different moving parts that came together into that database that's uh, that's running or the data that's running on uh, on Alia Fox. Firstly, over on the left, this is the the main source of um, of, of where most most of the uh, information comes from. There's actually a um, a, a set of uh, Formula One fans, and they maintain this this Ergast. Uh, database. We have so so. What do we do next? Well, we we attach that to Idea Fox and we convert it into our internal graph representation. And we've got we've got two approaches we can take here. Uh, we can either have an external job that converts it to to RDF triples, but with Idea Fox, you also have the option of of connecting to uh, to relational databases as well um, to to materialize some of what's in there. So that's part one. That's where most of the data. Is coming from, but then we've also got some some information that pertains to the to the drivers. So over on the the right hand side, we're we're scraping Wikipedia. So we scrape a small piece of text. We run a tiny little NLP task over that text to extract information. Uh, here here it's mainly about the weather. Nice. Am I to understand correctly that if I wanted to use RDF Fox, it's just a database. So the actual interface, there is no interface, and that's fine. Um, that I would just be connecting to 
to that that graph database and I would just be writing my queries to construct it and to actually query it. Is that accurate? Right. So yes, it is a is is a database. Here's a here's a view. Um, here is a view of it of it running. So you can run it from the command line. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, why don't we why don't we just uh, why don't we start it from scratch? So that's that's what was running. So from my command line, I can run Audio Fox in in a few different modes. Here I'm running it in sandbox mode, and I'm giving it a a startup script. Pretty simple set of instructions. We document what all of these mean. Um, in essence, what have we got? We've got let's let's start up the endpoint, the, the REST endpoint that provides the API. Let's create a data store. Um, let's begin a transaction. Let's import some data. Let's import some rules. More on the rules in a in a moment or two. Um, and then let's commit that transaction. And what you saw here was um, the, the that script running up. You can type the info command, and we've got within a matter of what five. Five seconds running on my laptop, um, mm -hmm. a, a database here with with five million triples, mm -hmm. um, all all loaded in. Mm. What components in that data uh, are you being used for that inference? And yep. so, Pretty can much. you give us an example, like the input, and then what would the output be of an example from this? So, what does teammate mean? Well, teammate means we've got two drivers, two drivers that raced and had two race results, so result one and result two. And those two results to be you know, party to this uh, teammate relationship must have raced in the same race. That's what that top bit signifying and um, also have a have the constructor in common. We're looking for this pattern within the data and then we're establishing a new relationship between these two results. And we're we're doing that all automatically through through the rules engine. So through. would it be fair to call this uh, similar to an ontology? where you're kind of defining what the rules and the model is that you're expecting from the data? Yes, yeah. A lot of ontologists are using tools like Protege and things mm. like that to actually design the model. So Absolutely. those are in, you know, those can be exported as, as RDF models. So I'm assuming you can just load your model into RDF Fox that way. Is that accurate? A absolutely. And in fact, some of our Good. founders were, oh, Professor Ian Horrocks was one, one of our founders. He was the chair of the OWL our, our, our standards committee, so yeah. we, we absolutely have to uh, have to support. Our, right? <laughs> you have to. <laughs> have no a good way it. <laughs> <laughs> we do have the pretty interface. Um, oh, good. So here is here is that uh, that teammate relationship that we that we just described and, and looked at with a with a mm -hmm. visual, right? So so here is, um, in fact, I think, uh, yeah, Ayrton Senna and Stefan. Hansen and they were teammates at, at some point in time. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we're seeing here is some of the original data that came in. So we've got driver driver 102 and driver 140, uh, four, four, they mm -hmm. were teammates. Why were they teammates? Well, they had these two results. Mm -hmm. they, they shared constructor of the races. And then this, this line in between, this has teammates result is the one that's actually been materialized by our rule. Mm -hmm. um, there's some other stuff going on, and this is where we, this is where there's a bit of a de debate as to whether this class is as ontology or not. But sure. Some of uh, some of what's also presented in this picture is, here is the position. So in this particular race, Ayrton Senna was third. Mm -hmm. That, according to modern scoring rules, has a points has points of 15. Those mm -hmm. points were not actually in the original data. We're we're computing that through through our rules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Similarly, um, Stefan over here had a position of 11. Unfortunately, only the first, I think, top 10 get res get a get a points within this scheme. Mm -hmm. So, you know, modern points of zero. So those are two things we've calculated, some some numerical sort of uh, computation. Mm -hmm. We've also calculated, obviously, this this teammates relationship, um, and that teammates relationship is going to have um, it is going to have the the reverse as well. Uh, so mm -hmm. Get around to my screen so so that goes in that goes in both directions mm -hmm. and then what we can also do is create some shortcuts in here to say well of my teammates you know, what was the best teammate score in the on the other side mm -hmm. so a few different things going on why are we doing all this well we're doing all this to make the life of the query writer easier <laughs> yes. um, and you know we all know writing queries can get a little bit hairy uh, if you, if you yes. don't have some of these helpful helpful things but also 
actually Formula One has an interesting history in that in the early days you could have more than two drivers in any in any race team. You could you know, could have many. Um, <laughs> so being able to again short circuit this and avoid this from being part of the com com a, a complex query that just grows into one massive hairball yep. um, is 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 useful. And I, I love that. And I think that's very important uh, to to note here is a lot of folks. Uh, are deterred with RDF uh, because they feel like it's very constrictive. It's very rule-based. It's very um, standards-based. And some think that that is so constrictive, it's not going to be able to, to handle their use case. There's too many exceptions. Well, first of all, you do need to look at your exceptions. If there are too many, maybe it's not RDF, maybe it's you. <laughs> you do have to ask yourself that sometimes. And that's just good health to your business. Uh, but outside of that, People have to realize that with any schema, it's extensible, right? You can extend it as you need to, again, within reason, because the farther away you get from true RDF, the worse the interoperability is, the worse it's going to be when you have to bring in data uh, from outside sources. So you did say that RDF Box is, is one of, if not the fastest in the RDF space. Why is that? So I know you can't go into the secret sauce, but if you could just summarize, like what is, why is that the case? Yeah, we have plenty of actual academic research that, that describes this. So to some extent, it's it's public knowledge um, in terms of some of the algorithms that are used, right? We've, we we found it on a, uh, out of the, the University of Oxford and, and much of the research from, um, from Ian, from Bernardo, from, from Boris, the, the founders and, and inventors of, of this, of this, a lot of this space and this technology that that's published research so we have some very clever data structures um, that we use under under the hood to represent all this information to um to index to index the hell out of every single triple within our system <laughs> right um, yeah to, to to achieve those sorts of speeds and also to focus on another part of this problem which is how quickly can i get data in right so performance as you say can be measured in many different ways, the latency of my network, the, the response time of my backend service with query, but also how, how quickly can I get this thing up and running? How quickly can I change it? Yeah. How quickly can I inference it? And our data structures are optimized around all of those different aspects with the exception of network latency. Um, there's not much you can do about the speed of light. We've, we've taken, I think, maybe a hard, the hard approach. We've built in memory and we've built on C++ those two things combined with the not so secret source of, of our data structures is is where we get our where we get our speed we have our website up and running so uh, oxford semantic dot tech is our is our website um, we have um, we have a, a free trial for idea fox so come come and grab yourself a, a trial license spin up your own instance of idea fox we you know, we are standards based so go and grab something that you've you've tried with uh, some, somewhere else or, or learnt through your courses, have running in your business, go and try it. Our, our, uh, our evaluation license is not restricted by anything other than time. So you can run this on the, you know, the biggest AWS instances. Um, you could go and load the entire contents of Wikidata and with a big enough machine, you'll get that, you'll get that, you'll get that up and running in a couple of hours um, and see the kind of query results that, that we were seeing today.